My name is Carl Crawford, and I love my DeWalt 20 volt tools. Well, I love my 12 volt tools as well, but the 20 is where they run the power's at. Occasionally, one of these 20 volt tools will start to misbehave where uh, it, it almost feels like the battery is not attached, uh, the light will blip on, and uh, you don't get any function. Uh, but if you mess around with the battery a little bit, it'll, it'll come on, especially if it's operating like this. It seems like the battery holding down like that will make it work, and you go to drill a hole like this, nothing. Uh, both of these drills have been starting to misbehave a little bit, so let's see if we can uh, get one of them to misbehave and show you kind of what it's doing. Yep, see there, we get the light blipping on, but well, there we got some function there, and then it died out. Nothing there. It'll work for a while, then it'll stop working. And of course, when it stops working, it's when you need it. There we go. So we got two drills that are misbehaving. Let me preface this by saying this could actually be the battery. The same problem that I'm going to show you uh, can also happen to the battery as it can happen to the drill. But uh, let's proceed as if the problem is in the drill. If we find that it's not, then uh, we'll have to look at another cause. But uh, what I'm going to show you, I have found to fix um, several of my tools. I had, um, seems to affect the tools that, um, like impact, um, rotary hammer, things like that, that have a lot of impact and vibration. So, uh, if you look at how the uh, terminals are made, you've got four terminals here. The larger of the two are the positive and negative from the battery. Uh, the other two, I'm not sure of the exact function, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess that there's maybe a temperature sensor buried inside the, uh, the cells, or maybe it's measuring a um, cell to cell voltage instead of the whole pack voltage. Uh, but it has the, it lets the drills know something about the state of charge in the battery, um, possibly the battery overheating. So uh, keep that in your mind here. Let's open one of these up. Uh, most of these tools are held together with a Torx T10 style screw. Uh, kind of small and usually have to have one that is like a regular screwdriver style and not just a bit because some of these screws are down inside a, a counter bore and it would be very hard to get to it if you just had a bit in a bit holder. So sometimes an old old fashioned screwdriver with a handle is the only way to go. I'm guessing we don't even have to take the drill all the way apart because really what I'm wanting to do is I want to pull out this uh, connection block, which has a little bit of play to it. It's designed to have some play. We're going to pull out that connection block and I'm going to show you what I have found to be a trouble spot on these DeWalt tools. Now, I haven't had it happen to any of my 12 volt tools, uh, but it's very possible the same thing could happen. Um, but the 12 volt tools don't generally seem to have as no, they don't have as much power, so they don't make as much banging and vibration. Um, and so we might not have the same problems with those. Let's see if this will come apart enough now. Get that out of there. Looks like there's a sticker across here that we'll have to, well, we can go ahead and cut it. This drill's been broken in. Okay, so we may be able to get that apart enough. Fish this thing out of here. may have spoken too soon. Oh, almost. Okay, there we go. Okay, it'd be nice if this was out in the open a little bit more, but um, and show you what we're going for here. So you've got these four terminals, four wires. The large wires on the outside, those are the power. Black and red, that's the main 20 volt power. 
But these other two wires, these two small wires, um, those are just like a signal wire or something like that. That's where I normally see the problems. And let's cut off this heat shrink and we'll see if that is the case. What I have found is that when they attach these wires, they strip the wire, they wrap it around the terminal post, and they flux and solder it, and what will happen is the wire breaks right here, or right there, or right up in here. Because uh, what, what happens is when they put the flux on the wire, and then they put the solder on it, the solder sucks up the wire uh, where, wherever the flux is, and so what you end up with is a flexible wire, a normally flexible wire, which when it comes up to this point right here is now rock hard because it has the, the solder wicked up the wire. And um, then as the tool bounces and vibrates and whatnot, uh, that wire will break right there. And it'll work for a while, and you'll think that, oh, the pack is loose, um, Maybe if I tape the pack in or something like that, uh, it'll work, and it just gets worse and worse. Because uh, sometimes this insulation that's around these two small wires here uh, kind of holds the wire together. So as it's working back and forth and finally breaks, uh, then the insulation kind of serves to hold the end of the wires together. And when they're touching, that's when it'll work, and when they come apart, that's when it doesn't. Uh, now this one's made a liar out of me because it looks like uh, it is still okay. So the problem with these two drills may just be this one pack. It may be that the terminals in the pack are dirty and not, uh, and not letting it work. But, but let's proceed as if, um, if this is broken. Now, why doesn't it happen to the big wires, the ones that carry all the power? Well, I'll tell you why. If you look at these here, these are not soldered, but rather welded to those terminals. Um, but the other two, the smaller two, are stripped, sent through the hole, back around each other, a little flux and solder, and that's what causes the problem is that the wire gets hard right there at the bottom. So how do you fix it? Uh, well, you put it back just like the factory did, cut the wire off, strip it back a little bit, uh, and re-solder it on there. So uh, if you come across one of these tools that is showing that problem, that's the first place I would check. Uh, like I said, this one's made a liar out of me, but uh, I've probably fixed four or five tools uh, with, with that at where they've broken right there at uh, one of those two small wires. So um, I hope that uh, helps somebody and gets their tool running again.